Welcome gamers to Second Front. This is a game from Microprose, which has just come out. Uh, this is going to be just going to be playing through a scenario, probably going to take maybe three, maybe four sessions to get through it, I would guess. Uh, this is going to be a fairly big scenario. It's covered, going to cover uh, armoured forces and infantry forces as well. Let's get into it. Uh, by the way, I did make a couple of videos uh, about a week or two back, just going through the tutorials, which I would suggest that you have a look if you're trying to get an understanding of how the game is played. I won't be going into too much detail, but I will actually explain my both strategic thoughts and tactical thoughts for the game itself. Um, there's a couple of things I don't like about the game, but overall I'm really, really enjoying it. Uh, there's a few user interface issues, but um, the game is sort of like an advanced squad leader-esque sort of style game where you've got like a almost like a tabletop feel to the mechanics that it, it sort of uses. Uh, in, in a bit of an abstracted way, the way it sort of does handle it, and it just works very, very well. And then you've got like a really nice uh, graphic uh, treatment uh, for the game itself as well, so, which sort of, it, it belies the complexity of the game. It sort of makes the game feel like it's easier than what it really is. And it's quite a, quite a difficult game to play, but it's a very rewarding game to play. Now, you can sort of blunder your way into the game, but you're not going to blunder your way through the game. Uh, things that there's a few things that I think people will struggle with. I, I certainly struggle with a few things with the user interface, which I'll explain when I get into the actual game itself. And uh, also, there is um, uh, like there may be the RNG aspect, like the random number generator aspect of of the uh, of the attacks may also do your head in at times. So just be aware of that. But it's not it's not bad. It's sort of it's bad in the sense of like if you ever played uh, Blood Bowl and weren't used to playing Blood Bowl where the RNG would do your head in while you're trying to get used to it. But once you actually knew how to try to work within it, it worked fairly well. And so that's sort of what we've got in here. We've got a, a situation where we've got a game where the, the odds are very, very low, but you can get lucky shots and the enemy can get lucky shots as well. And it can completely destroy your, um, your plans. <laughs> Which sort of, uh, but it still it doesn't bother me uh, in this game, whereas it does bother me with with a lot of other games. Anyway, let's just go and play this particular scenario. We're going to be playing this one here, which is the um, which is a death knell for Leningrad. I haven't finished this one. I've I've tried it a couple of times. It's quite difficult to actually play this one, so we'll see how we go. Uh, now the forces we actually have, we've got a fair few different sorts of forces. Uh, I won't read up all this. You can just pause and read that if you're wanting to sort of see what this scenario is about. The thing I think it's interesting in through here is the different types of units. We've got a lot of different armoured units to, that we can bring back in. We've got a few different types of tanks as well. Maybe I'll show you this when we get in there. The important thing, though, is to have a bit of a look at the uh, at the actual armour for the um, for the hull and also the armour for the turrets. Uh, so the Stug 3s have got very, very solid armour, so that they're, they're quite strong. The uh, What else have we got in through there? Nothing else really comes close to it. The Panzer threes, uh, three H's, are fairly good with the, uh, particularly with the frontal armor of the actual thing itself, and then the frontal arm, sorry, the turret armor as well, is fairly strong. The Panzer IV is actually a bit weaker in the turrets. In fact, the Panzer IV is worse than the Panzer three H. Then we also have some Panzer three Fs, which are terrible with their armor. Their turret side armor is surprisingly strong. And so this is important stuff for us to sort of get a bit of a feel for. We've then got a number of different sorts of infantry forces. We've got like TNT coming in. We've got mortars, machine guns, or medium machine guns, light machine oh, guns. Is it light machine guns? Yeah, light machine guns. That's sort of what we actually have. From their side, they've got much weaker tank forces in terms of their armor. They've got a couple that actually, like the T-26s, have got a little bit of armor through there, but most of them are fairly weak. And so we do actually have a, uh, a goal here where we, or not a goal, but we have a, a way of being able to, if we can sort of just stay stable and get good firing positions, we're going to do fairly well. Now these here, they've got some 37 millimeter um, 61K uh, anti-tank guns. They're going to be quite strong. They've got 76 millimeter, which is going to be even stronger. So these are really, really powerful. So we're going to have to be very, very careful of those. Uh, and they also have 37 millimeter 1K in through here as well, which has only got it's still got the 37 millimeter long, but I don't think it's going to be as effective as the uh, as these uh, these ones in through here. So that's the that's the forces we have to be concerned about. They do actually have a couple of armored cars as well back in through this side, but very very weak armor. 
Uh, on turn two, they get uh, some uh, like they get some of these uh, BT sevens, and on turn five, they get at some T twenty sixes. Again, not super powerful. Uh, if we have a look at ours, we on turn three, we end up getting a whole lot of uh, Panzer three H's. This is when we get our Panzer three H's and the Panzer fours. We also on turn two get a lot, a lot of infantry coming in with a lot of the. Um, in fact, turn two you can see in through there. We do pick up like a lot of different forces coming in on turn two. So turn two and turn three is where we get our our uh, reinforcements. For them, it's turn two and turn five. Uh, and they get a little bit of extra. They get three more regular uh, infantry coming back in at that point as well. So it's going to be a matter, because we're looking at the forces, we're going to need to sort of take land or take ground and then set up kill zones if we can do that and sort of then start to try to work within the, um, the confines of the, of the time constraints. So that's where we're going to be. Let's just click on play and we'll just continue. Right in we go. So this is the uh, this is the battle map. I love this as well. Like it's, it's got, just got to get a, a very much a tabletop feel the way that the game has sort of been put together. Now we can see there the Russians are in control of the city essentially, uh, including this area down through here, the farmlands. Uh, they've, they've got control of the, the station, and uh, there's a few different objectives. We'll go through each of these in through here as well. Uh, our forces are just coming on in on this side of the map. Uh, what else can we sort of have a bit of a look at? Let's have a quick look at the uh, victory points. So we've actually now got, uh, so capture the victory location. So capture the victory locations before any of them uh, get to zero points. So we do have to go through all of these. That, that, so there's actually three of them. Uh, victory point locations lose 10 points a turn and do not uh, you do not control them. The computer will try to recapture victory point locations until your infantry force is at least 1.5 times as strong as the computer's infantry force. And so that's essentially what we need, then need to sort of do back in through here with the uh, with like the destroying the enemy as well. So that's the second the second objective is to, is to destroy their uh, their infantry. So that's the uh, that's the victory goals. Uh, now, let's just quickly go through the things, just so I can get them out of the way of what I don't like with the game. There's only a handful, and I, I love the game overall, but I just I do struggle with this aspect. There's uh, a few different things that uh, that do bother me. The first one is we're not going to hear much sound when we're sort of playing the game. It looks great. The game actually looks really, really good, but the sound itself is uh, very, very poor. Uh, the just the volume of it is is terrible. You hardly hear anything. It is there, but it's just not there. If, if I actually press escape and go to options, this is the audio options. You can see I've got the master volume up full. Now, normally when I'm playing every other game, I have this on about 50%, just so it actually doesn't overpower my audio, like when I'm sort of doing commentary. Uh, but in this case, it's on full and, and I can't even hear it. So this is really, really bad. I've had to I've turned the music down. I don't know if the rest of it's tied in with the music, but I don't think it actually is. So that's one big issue for me is just the audio, easy to fix. Another one that I don't like is that you can't save the game. Uh, when you're playing, you have to wait until it's the end of the Russian phase of the uh, of the turn counter. And not just like there's so many different phases, sorry, there's different turns, like each each uh, player has a, has their own turn, but within that their turn, we start off with our move and fire phase, then the then the Russian fire phase, then there's sort of like an escape phase, and then we have a um, an advance phase for the for for us for our side, and then we actually have like a a, a close combat phase. So that's one phase. Then the Russians have their phase. I have to wait for the Russians to finish their phase. Then it auto saves at that point, so I can't just go in and save the game. I don't know why. I don't understand why that's not something that can be done, but it's, it just can't be done in the game. So it's weird. It's really, really weird the way it does actually sort of then work. So it's a very strange game with those sorts of things. The other thing as well is that there's no next. Like I've got all these different units that I've, I need to start to move, but there's no like go to the next unmoved or, you know, the next unit. There's none of, there's no keyboard shortcut for that, which I find, again, super surprising for a game like this because it's, you know, there's a bit of complexity to it and uh, a fair bit of complexity to it. And so it would be good to know, you know, what your next move can be. It's funny because it sort of half goes there, but it just doesn't quite do it. And these, for me, should be things that are fairly easy to fix, but they're just not. They're just not done. So... 
weird. It's just a weird, weird system. Let's just rotate the map around a little bit so we can sort of start to think about what we're going to be doing because we're going to be attacking from the southern edge end of the board through here. These are our, uh, our spawn locations for when we do get our reinforcements. Uh, we've got tanks over here, armoured cars in through this side, uh, SP guns in through there, or sort of like Stugs, and then we actually have our infantry coming in on this side of the map. So that's actually what we end up having. Now, in terms of the actual battlefield itself, let's just talk about what we've got. We've got ourselves a uh, an area through here inside this... Um, uh, inside this windmill, uh, so gets the, this particular unit has got a height advantage. There's a sniper in there, and then we actually have this um, the 37 millimeter uh, anti tank gun back in through this side as well. So there, that's the two forces at that location. There's a, a a rock wall through here. Now the rock wall can't be passed by anything with with wheels on it, so that can't so wheeled units can't go across, but track units can. So they can get across, even though this one's got like, these are half tracks, they've still got the wheel components, so they can't get across the rock wall. The rock wall is great for uh, protection, so we're going to be trying to make use of that initially to sort of get into the actual areas. Uh, now, we also then have an objective in through here, like the main farm building, uh, back in through that particular area. We've got other farming buildings back in through this side, a silo which we can't get into. Uh, there's another 37 millimeter. Uh, uh, anti-tank gun in through there so we have to be careful of that one that that could do a lot of damage to us the uh, we've got a mortar team over here machine gun team in through there but green so this is not very this is not very good so you can see when i hover over that one it's just saying green with a medium machine gun so the medium machine gun is something we have to be a bit careful of this we don't really know can't identify but we saw there with the with with what was actually coming in the order of battle did show a 37 millimeter which is what that one will then be and then we've got the 76 millimeters further back so the 276 millimeters are way back over here around this other objective that's actually uh, the last objective we're going to go for at worth at this stage 200 points uh, this is the station with 190 points that's the other objective and then we've got the farmhouse in through here at 180 so that's going to be the series of objectives we're going to ultimately need to get some um, some kill zones. And so I think the kill zone we want to get will be in here. That way we can sort of hide ourselves away from the uh, from these anti-tank guns and sort of so we don't have to deal with them. They have limited vision. Like if we have a bit of a look, we can sort of see that there's... They can't really see much, but they can see across through that kill zone in the middle there. And this one as well can't really see beyond what it can then sort of see it nice in nice and close as well. So over through this side, we've got a heavy machine gun group back in in, the, in those in that rough ground. Uh, we've got a sniper in through there. Um, if I just press tab, we can then just get rid of the uh, roofs. It makes it a little bit easier to sort of see what's going on. More infantry. They're sort of light tanks coming back in through this side. Tanks, armored cars in the middle. Infantry back in th into this side in the actual station itself. Uh, sniper back up and through the side. So that's actually what, what we actually have in terms of the, uh, the, the battle battleground. Now what we want to do is we want to try to milk off the, um, the various attacks from particularly this unit, this unit, and if this unit's going to fire, then this unit as well. So uh, the mortar I don't think is going to be a super threat to us uh, with reaction fire. So we're in, the, we're in the move and fire phase. Now as we move, they will get reaction fire. Let's have a bit of a look and see what our forces have got. By the way, if ever you want to see what's going on, you can just go into here so you can sort of see what's, what the different bits and pieces are from the different sorts of cards. And so we do actually have like information. So always make use of this. It's, it's quite handy to sort of see what's actually there, like in terms of even the, the types of um, how things actually just work with the actual cards. So when we have a look at a card and hover over that one, for example, that's still B, you can see down through here the card is then it then does sort of show a lot of information this is actually really really cool the way this one does work now we've got a couple of things with this particular stug that we can do or even this one through here uh, it does when i highlight this one it does show me what i can actually hit i can hit the mortar team for the aiming though i've got a zero percent chance of actually getting getting that one done so it's not going to do anything if i could get the aiming up i'd be okay but you can see there's a lot if I just go and right click on that one and then hover over this one, you can see there that um, target is moving in open ground. So that should make it ultimately easier for us. So, um, so we've got good aiming with that one. Then we've got uh, assault gun, so no cover, uh, aim hindrance unless fired on from above. So the assault gun is not going to help us much in this instance. 
The, we're also firing through grain, which is giving that we're, we're also then getting a, an obscured vision. And it's also behind the rock wall. The rock wall, again, provides a lot of cover. So that's not really going to help us. But we do actually have a vision straight the way down through here. So if I just right click and hover over this one through here, we have to shoot past. Oh, sorry, we've got the assault gun through here. Actually, I don't know if that's, if I do this one, does that kind of do the same thing? Yeah, no, the, sorry, we had to we had to shoot past this one to get to those, so that, that's not ideal. But this one here, we don't have the same impediment. I've got a 42% chance to aim and hit this one um, because there's nothing in the way. And so if we just right-click on this one and just hover over that one, is there's a wooden building which is giving them some protection, but overall, there's a pretty good chance we're actually going to do some damage, like 42%. This is actually about as good as your, um, as your odds will get with the actual game itself. 1% uh, chance that the, the, the gun will jam, and the 17% chance for if we get a quick reload and we get to shoot again. So that's actually fairly good. Um, if we can suppress that somehow or you know do some damage, that's going to really be helpful. Uh, let's just go back to this other one. Sorry, I'll just click, click on this one in through here, have another look. And so again, we've still got the zeros because we're um, shooting through all, like all of this different cover. So this is definitely the one for us to go for here without actually moving. So we haven't moved the Stug 3. Uh, let's just go across. Please work. And we missed, unfortunately. So we didn't get that one. Now I can fire here again. It's only 17% because we have to fire past the other tank. So it's been, it's been modeled that way. What I might do is that I'm going to come up so we can sort of fire through the middle. And so I'm going to move up and then actually just stop. Um, I can move across to here, but I think I'll actually just do it this way to start with. That way I can sort of move and fire through the middle of the map. And this one, I'm doing this because I've got very, very strong armor in, in my in my turret and also in, in the, in the sorry, yeah, the, the frontal armor is very strong in the turret and also in the actual, um, in the vehicle itself. The difference with this though, is that uh, I actually have also a, a, the wall. And so the wall's gonna give me added protection against this gun. So let's just move it on up. We're then just gonna stop it. And now we do get a shot through here. We don't really get any chance to do any damage. Let's just do it anyway, just in case we get a super lucky shot now. I think that's, that's probably another thing as well. I think that there should be at least a chance to get a lucky shot. Although, I don't know. It, it, it does work pretty well, the combat, I've got to say, in the game. Now, um, what do we got? What do we got? Had no reaction fire from there. Uh, this one here has got a uh, medium machine gun. I wouldn't mind getting that into the middle of the map, ultimately. Um, I can't really offload that easily. I can off. I can bring that one across into there, that me medium machine gun. Maybe we take them into there. What else have we got? We've got ourselves a mortar. I might bring the mortar up and around. So I want to get, I want to get them off the vehicle and surround the different areas. So we can get them off there. Let's do that. To see if there's any reaction fire. Now we can fire back up there at five percent. Again, that's pretty good odds for the uh, for this game, to be honest. Missed. We are going to be wanting to assault this as well. Uh, we'll have a bit of a look. This one here has got like um, two. It's, a, it's got a full group and then a half group. Uh, back and through this side with a medium machine gun. I think I might send this one out across to here to take on this medium machine gun because we didn't quite we didn't get what we needed. Let's just move it up. Now if we if we get fired on behind the rock wall we should be okay. Yep, so we took cover in behind the rock wall. They did miss in this instance, they had a 17% chance at aiming at us. Uh, then to do, uh, like if they did get the hit, it would then be 13% to then do the damage. Our guys, if we click, just click on those, we've, we've moved. So we have hardly any real um, abilities here to do much uh, damage to these guys, but let's just do it anyway. We missed again. Now we have another, this one here is a full group. Elite with a medium machine gun and light machine guns. Now I can actually offload there. I might do that, I think. So we'll offload.
Now we've got like a, a big contingent in through here, a half, a one and a half group plus the commander. So we've got like two, two very good groups. And if we have another look at this one through here, we've got twenty five percent chance now with with doing the doing the damage in here. So let's let's go and do that. And we've got reloads, and we did break them this time. So they're now, they're now going to run. We got this as well, actually, which we can actually go for with the machine gun. It's low odds. The fact that we've broken them, actually, if we go back to here, it's got a 13%. Let's go back this way. Well, we malfunctioned there with the medium machine gun, unfortunately. So the, the medium machine gun is now going to be out of action until it can be repaired, which could be some time away. This group in through here, we've got a uh, one and a half squads in through here with TNT. I might just come back in to take this one on. So let's go and get them off there. That's not reacting. Oh, it missed. It did reload. And now we'll just fire on this as well. Only 8% chance because we're moving. Nothing happening there. This is an anti-air gun, so we're not going to really do much there. I'm just going to move this one up a little bit. Um, let's just stop it at this point. That way we should be able to fire back. So the, the anti-air fires backwards. So we've got 1% and 1%. Well, we'll try the one percenter. So it's now firing from the back of the vehicle. And what else do we have? We've got another group, just a small group of infantry coming back as well. Um, this one also has an anti-air. I'll bring this one off. Take that location. Missed again. Five, fifteen percent. Okay, we'll take that one with the turret machine gun. Missed again. Okay. So that's moved that one. Now we've got um, issues here. And we want to sort of avoid, if we have a quick look at the uh, at this one through here, so we've got, that one can sort of see down to there. These guys, this will be hard with this anti-tank rifle. It's going to have, um, it, can, it can fire at 12. So uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that's where it's going to get full damage. Anything over here will be sort of half damage. That one there can also see these other areas. What we might do is move one of the um, one of these, which has got the, um, the side the side armor, does a bit more damage through there. We can actually move that one into this position and then stop it, so we're facing back out the other way, and we can use the rock wall to then protect us. So we'll just go and move and stop. We do get a shot here. Now I can rotate this turret around. Now remember the front of the turret is actually worse than the side. So ultimately, if I go back into there, there's no real chance we have of doing any real damage. And it'll be the same here as well, I would think. If we just rotate that turret around. If you've got a 3%, I'll, I will take that in that case. Oh, we pinned it. Not that it's going to make any real difference. And now we're just going to move the turret around so that we're actually facing the other way. Just so if it's going to attack, it will it will hit the side of the turret where we're fairly strong. Now, another thing we could do here just for added protection is to just go and right click somewhere with this one selected. Hang on, why is that not doing anything? Oh, we can't do it. We can't actually put the, um, put the unit back in, but that's okay. We've got the turret facing the side if it does actually attack us in through there. So that's one of the uh, one of these ones coming back in. We'll do the same thing. Now I'm worried about this one here. Where can that one see? It can't see to there, so we might move this one up. The t unfortunately, the armor here is just not great. It's not terrible. It's just not great. Yeah, front or side is not going to really matter that much with this one. So let's just go back across. Let's 
see if I'm going to get any reaction fire. And really, the only the only one we have a shot at is it's in here, which we're not going to be able to do anything. So we'll move that one there. Now again, that's the turret. That's the uh, that's the the vulnerable the front of the turret. So I'm just going to go and spin that turret around so it's facing sideways to this one over here. We do actually still have the bow machine gun. It's not going to do anything. Now the armored cars are interesting in this instance because they um, they can really zip around. Let's go and move them all the way across towards this other side. I think that that will sort of still work out okay. Though we could actually bring them in, bring one of them into here. Let's let's do this. These are quite weak in terms of their armor. I'll be in a good position next. This armored car. I will actually bring this one. See how it wants to go through there? That's very, very dangerous. So we don't want to do that. What we'll do is we'll just sort of send it uh, so that it stays. So we've got eight points there. We'll keep the engine running. I don't want it to go through the road system, which it does prefer. I'll keep the engine running this way as well. Now it's moving, so it's actually um, it's in the process of moving along, so it's going to be hard for anyone to actually hit it. Uh, we've still got the Stug, which has actually now done its its shot there, uh, which it missed. We're sort of lucky that we broke that one. I think we're done. Again, why isn't there no next button? Actually, no, we're not done. We've still got these, these uh, smaller light tanks. And ultimately, what can that one see? You can't see much else. Let's just position these further back. Maybe one on this side. So we'll just get the facing this way. Again, the side armor is very, very poor. There's just nothing going to happen there. Just leave it there. And we'll do the same on this other side as well. Just further back. And that will then, so we're gonna be playing fairly cautiously, trying to sort of get our forces moving up without really risking too much. Now we have, we've sort of left all of our infantry further away than what I would like. I would have liked some infantry over this other side, but we can still go and do that one another time. Um, okay, let's uh, end our phase here. Now they've got a few shots that they can do. All of these can fire. Missed. That would be fairly... They did reload, they hit the wall. And unfortunately we just lost uh, a unit there. And they've now shocked us in the, into there. They've hit the turret. And it keeps on reloading. So they keep on getting lucky reloads. It hit the turret and ricocheted because, again, we've got the good armor. It reloaded again. And again, hit the wall. And that was the end of that one. Any tank rifle didn't reload. They were very lucky with the shots over there. But it's only two victory points. Heavy machine gun has actually stunned us. Now that won't worry us for too long. But that's all fine. So by moving sideways, even though it hit the, hit the turret, it ricocheted off. They're, they're now making a run for it. And um, that was their escape phase done. This one will come back. It's, it's taken no damage. It's just going to be um, sort of a bit uh, not, not knowing what to do. So the medium machine gun has now been uh, been taken. We've now got the advanced phase. Now what we want to do is we want to go into these locations. So let's go and grab this group and move into this house, so we can actually then uh, put pressure on the on the victory location. So we've got that one through there, and actually, what can we see from there? Only that one. That's actually still okay because we can get across uh, soon. Uh, we then have this one in through this side as well, where we can start to move this one up. Now they're going to have... 
can they see us from there? They can't if we go into there. That one sort of can, but let's just go and move this this group up. Just select the infantry and move them across into this location. So we're a bit exposed to this. Uh, now we've got a couple of units. We've got uh, like basically one full unit and two half units with TNT that can actually go and, and assault this area. Now we have a 92% chance of doing of getting a kill and a 28% chance that they're going to actually do, a, do kills back. Let's just go and do that. We'll send this one in as well because we can send them in and then we can start to combine these. Uh, that's the crew. If we just go with the elite force, they can move in. The crew can't do this one. We'll move them all in together. Probably not a great idea. Um, this one here has, has been sort of stunned. And this one in here, um, let's move that one in as well. Just move that one in close. Now, this one could do a lot of damage in, the, in another turn or so. That's all we can really do with our forces. Again, why is there no next, you know, next units that you can do? Actually, we do get a chance to move this crew. Um, not that we need to. I mean, it can be useful. Yeah, let's just have it move out there. It may become a target. Now we've got melee phase in through there. That's the only melee phase that we actually have. And our guys were fine. We killed them completely. It's now the recovery phase. So they did recover. And our machine gun has now been repaired. Excellent. And it's now going to be the recovery phase in through there. Then it's going to be the Russian phase. And the game won't save until it's actually finished with their phase. And so we'll, um, we'll play the game until that point. <laughs> <laughs> for turn one. Uh, the next phases will go a bit faster than what we've sort of been doing through here, but anyway, this one will sort of then show. So it's now, now time for them to move. They're moving their forces up. They've moved back away. Now we got some... Re re like, we did manage to... Um, good, they hit the wall again. This is good for us. They're trying to fire back on this particular group. They've moved groups up into here. That one's fired and missed. Now, well, who got broken there? Maybe this one here, I'm not sure. They're moving out. And we did break that one as it moved. So there's more forces now coming into this no man's land. So they're moving up to that other objective. Lots of forces moving in. Armoured cars moving out as well. Yeah, they're going to be quite zippy. We've got a tank that's moved across there, which we don't have much. That's missed because it's moving, but it's going to be very, very dangerous after this. Another one moving as well across that ridge line. All right, now we have a fire phase where we can do different firing on different units. So, for example, we can try to attack this one here in the... Um, let's now move down a little bit. There's only 1% chance that that crew will actually do anything. We'd missed with that one. This one here is actually much more, more likely to do some, some actual damage. You've got a 21% chance we'll, we'll wound it, 11% for a kill. Nothing happening. Actually, it's broken. That was the one that actually broke. We can't target these as such. Why can't we do that? Oh, hang on. No, they're actually struggling. Okay, we can't do anything with them just yet. Who's broken? Oh, it's there. It's, is it that one broken as well? Yeah, that, one's, that sniper's broken. We're going to be able to take that one out fairly fairly readily. This one here, we've got a good shot. 
some good percentages in through there actually. So we'll, we'll sit, definitely take these. Reloaded with our machine guns, we broke them completely. So we're going to be across here very, very quickly. Reloaded again, and we got a killed in action. So they've still got some of their green forces. And we missed that one, that's fine. This one over here, 8%. Missed. Now that there, 58%, good, really good chance to actually knock this one out. This is this is quite dangerous. Oh, we missed, damn it. We did pin it. We didn't get a reload, unfortunately. That would have been quite handy. Um, this one does get a shot, so we can now turn the turret around and fire at this one. Again, a 58. Nothing much. Still got the turret machine gun as well. Nothing happening. Just turn it around again. It's not really worth it. There's too much uh, fields in the way. Now these here, we've actually stopped. We've got a 3%. These are moving very, very quickly. If we have a look and see what we can actually do with these. We've got a um, uh, firing with a closed hatch. So we've got poor aiming. Because we were stunned, we went inside. Uh, we're wounded. Can take up the echo. So our, our guys are a bit, a bit wounded in through here. We just don't have the accuracy. Let's try this one over here. Still bad, actually. Can we unbutton? I don't think we can unbutton at this stage. Let's just go for it. No. Not really going to happen. And we do have a shot there. It's not going to happen there either. Okay, so this is still the Russian phase, and it's our firing phase though. See how it's got like a one? Uh, so it's just showing, see it sort of half does what it should do. It's telling me that there's one more unit that can still fire. Oh, this one got another shot. Turret machine gun. So why is there no next? It shows, it comes up through there. It's just weird. It's very, very strange. Um, okay, that's all we can do. The escape phase. These guys should run. routed and it's gone further up. It's going to try to hide. So the units are going to look to advance. Okay, and then once we do this this phase here, that will be the end of the end of the actual. That's when we can save the game. Finally, <laughs> we can call this episode to a close. Uh, what happened there? Oh, we got a kill. They got a kill there. All right. Okay. So uh, new reinforcements have now arrived. So that will be in the next phase. So guys, I'm going to leave it here. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in uh, episode two, where we've actually now got a whole lot of forces that are coming in. Uh, not so much there, some more in through that side as well. And so there's multiple forces we can now bring to bear. We're, we're losing slightly at negative three, uh, but we do actually have some options now with what we can then go and do. So I'll leave it there. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next episode. We should be able to move a bit faster than what we've been doing here, by the way. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it should all start to sort of uh, come together. Um, yeah, we have lost a few, a few things now. Uh, but anyway, I'll uh, catch you in the next uh, episode. Thanks for watching.